So hello and welcome back to the course on physics for engineers. So this is now the final chapter, uh, the final lesson for the final chapter of this course. So before we proceed to this lesson, let us first review some concepts. So in the previous lesson, we have discussed about concave and convex mirrors and also converging and diverging uh, thin lenses. So concave mirrors are also called uh, converging mirrors and convex mirrors are also called diverging mirrors. So for this last uh, topic, we will be talking about uh, optical instruments. So the first uh, optical instrument that we will be talking about uh, will be the eye because this is the basis for most of the optical instruments. So the eye functions like a camera or rather uh, the camera functions like the eye. So this is the diagram of the eye. <clears throat> so it has, it acts like a lens. There is a lens and then the lens is actually a converging lens and it will create a real and inverted images an image on the back of the eyeball uh, which is called the retina so the retina contains uh, rods and cones these are the light uh, sensitive uh, uh, cells and this will basically be connected to the optical nerve towards your brain for processing so the images that we see are actually real and inverted and it's the brain that processes those images and uh, inverts them. So the lens of the eye, the crystalline lens of the eye can actually change focal length. So that's one uh, uh, advantage of our eye. It can change focal length, meaning it can change focus. We can change the focal length uh, depending on where is the object located. So the image is formed at the retina. So in this case, if this is your object and this is your uh, crystalline lens, uh, in front of that lens is the pupil. So the pupil uh, actually, uh, when you compare it to, to the camera, uh, the pupil can be, uh, the pupil is the aperture of the camera. Uh, your eyelids are the shutter of the camera and the image sensor of a camera are your or in the eyes are the rods and cones in the retina so there are uh, several defects of vision uh, for our eyes so there's also there's what we call presbyopia and it's something to do with the nerve point of the eye so the near point of the eye is the minimum distance at which the eye can see objects uh, clearly and it recedes with age. So normally, we all we will all develop presbyopia or basically it's farsightedness, but first a normal farsightedness because uh, farsightedness is, can also be uh, uh, applicable for very young uh, ages. So the near point the distance from our eyes that we can see clearly, minimum distance, uh, recedes with age. It, it goes longer. So if, you, if your age is now 60 years old, your near point is around 200 centimeters or 2 meters. So meaning you can only see clearly from 2 meters and beyond. But two, uh, less than 2 meters, if, you, if, you, if that's very close to your face, then you cannot see it clearly. So that's presbyopia. It's natural. All of us will undergo this. Uh, defect of vision. So the far point is the maximum distance that uh, our eyes can see clearly. And usually for a normal eye, it's an infinity. So it's a it's very, very far distance. For example, we can still see stars, right? We can still see the moon. And that's basically a very far distance. So another defect of vision is myopia. So this is the normal eye. The image is formed at the retina, at the back of the eye. But for um, myopia, or nearsighted eye, another term for myopia is nearsightedness, uh, the image forms before the retina. So it can be the, uh, the, uh, the eye is too long. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's 
like an oblong shape rather or too sharp uh, too sharply curved so for a uh, myop uh, myopic eye or nearsightedness they can't actually uh, focus on uh, very far objects so they, they cannot see far objects they are just nearsighted they can only see objects that are near to the eyes so if you have a distant object uh, the image is actually not focused on the retina so to correct uh, nearsightedness or myopia you use a diverging lens so that this object will have an image that is closer to the uh, eyes. So basically, uh, what, ha what the diverging lens do is that it uh, makes an image and it brings the image in the near point of the eye with myopia. So that's the how to uh, correct, how to correct a myopia using a correcting lens, which is a diverging lens. So diverging lenses, if you will recall in diverging lenses, Objects near diverging lenses will have an image that is smaller. So if you see a person where his or her eyes are smaller than his actual eyes, then he's probably using a diverging lens and he has or he or she has a uh, myopia or nearsightedness. Okay. <clears throat> Another defect of vision is hyperopia. So in hyperopia, the eye is too short or the cornea is not curved enough wherein the image is formed at the back of the, of the retina. So hyperopia or farsighted people cannot uh, focus nearby objects. So uh, they're farsighted. They can only from see from, they can only see objects that are far from their eyes. So hyperopia and prismyopia are basically the same, but uh, hyper, uh, prismyopia develops with age. Hyper, hyperopia can can uh, hyperopia or farsightedness can be developed uh, even uh, in young children. So in hyperopia or farsightedness people, uh, they need to focus strongly to see clearly. But for prismyopia, uh, it's actually difficult to focus. So it's a different kind of focus. For farsighted people, they can still focus, but they'll they'll need to focus strongly to see clearly. So like that, they will see clearly. But for prismyopia, the normal farsightedness, uh, they're having, no matter how strong they focus, they can still see the image clearly. So that's the difference between hyperopia and prismyopia. But they, basically, the both of them are farsightedness. So you need a converging lens uh, to correct hyperopia or farsightedness. And what, uh, what it does is, uh, a, near, a nearby object, uh, the converging lens makes an image of a nearby object and places it at the uh, far, uh, sorry, at the near point, at the near point of the wearer. So take note, a farsighted uh, person has a near point that is farther actually than normal. So basically, if, if it's beyond the near point, the object is very near to the eye, so can no longer focus on it because his near point is, is way farther. So you will notice that people with farsightedness have converging lenses. And if you will recall, objects near a converging lens will appear larger, like a magnifying uh, glass. So their eyes will be magnified. So if you see people whose eyes are larger through, the, through, their, through their glasses, then they are farsighted people. Okay. So let's now go to another uh, optical instrument, which is the camera. So it's an instrument for capturing images and it basically functions like the eye. So you have a CCD or uh, a CCD sensor or CMOS sensor. Uh, that's, that's basically the function, similar function as the retina. So you have a group of lenses or element of lenses and you have an aperture that, that's basically your pupil. You have the shutter, that's your eyelid. And uh, the object, uh, the, sorry, the image produced by the camera is still uh, real and inverted. And the camera processor processes that into, inverts that into, uh, and inverts that images. So the camera can have a movable or zoom lens. So it's basically a set of lens where you can adjust the distances between the two lens uh, 
uh, to change the focal length, the effective focal length of the lens. So this is a zoom lens for a long focal length. This is a zoom lens for a short uh, focal length. So in an actual, there are actually a number of lenses inside your uh, camera lens. So projectors are just like cameras, but they are operating in uh, reverse. So uh, for a camera, as I've mentioned earlier, it can change its focal length, but uh, the focal length is inversely proportional to the field of view. So this is a short focal length. It has a large field of view. This is a longer focal length, but it has a narrow field of view. So the next instrument is the magnifier, basically the magnifying glass. So uh, one limitation of magnifying glasses are they can only have up to 20 times magnification. Now, there's a much more powerful magnifier, which is what we call optical uh, microscope. So an optical microscope is a magnifier, basically, but it's for viewing small objects, very small objects at very short uh, distances. So it can have a greater magnification power as compared to a regular magnifying glass due to a combination of lenses. So its magnification power can actually reach up to uh, in the level of 1,000 times, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 times. So this is a schematic diagram of a simple microscope. It has two uh, lenses, the eyepiece and the objective. And your object is here. And the image created by the microscope is a virtual and inverted image of your uh, virtual and inverted image of your object. So that one. So it's a virtual and inverted. So a telescope, on the other hand, is a magnifier for viewing large objects at large uh, distances. So there are two types of telescope, a refracting telescope and a reflecting telescope. A refracting teles uh, telescope primarily uses lenses such as this one. So you have two lenses here and the objective and the eyepiece uh, converging lenses. And the image form here is still a virtual and in, an inverted image. But the image is actually located at infinity. So another type of telescope is the reflecting telescope. So it, since it's reflecting, it uses a mirror, specifically spherical mirror. So it can be, the orientation can be like here. This is a concave mirror, a spherical mirror. So parallel rays from the star or starlight will focus on this cage here where we a camera will be placed here or sometimes there's a secondary mirror and there's an eyepiece to view or sometimes there's a secondary mirror and a hole in the center of the mirror to view. So usually most telescopes, uh, astronomical telescopes uses a concave mirror, a reflecting telescope and there's a, a hole at the center. So that is it for some of the basic optical instruments and basically that ends uh, the chapter on optics and basically ends our course on physics for engineers. So I hope you learned something and maybe I will see you in another course. So bye bye.